welcome to inquiring minds my name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review this brand new and controversial model from Wingsong the Wingsong 630 what's so controversial about it well it happens to be functionally and almost visually identical to the venerable Mont Blanc 149 if a bird pooped on the cap of the Wingsong 630 you'd need a loop to tell that it isn't a Mont Blanc and the Wingsong 630 is $145. So with a retail price for a new Mont Blanc 149, around $975 US, the Mont Blanc is 572% more expensive than the Wingsong. Is it also a 572% better pen? And where does the $5 Jinhao X159 fit in? Let's find out right now. <music> I was all set up ready to do a pen resurrection Sunday video of my 1938 Parker Vacumatic in green pearl the doorbell rang and a new package arrived and this is about two weeks early than I expected which is always nice this is the Wingsong 630 this is a well I'll show it to you uh, because I borrowed a Mont Blanc 149 for the occasion to compare with this new gold nibbed fountain pen from Wingsung. Let's take the sleeve off. And we have the upscale vinyl, but looks like carbon fiber case that has the silver foil stamped Wingsung logo and characters. And it opens up, and here is the pen. And so we have some grease so they do expect you to take this pen apart and we have a shim tool uh, an extra nib that's interesting uh, it's probably this kit just comes with that hooded nib style nib and uh, this little black tool is for taking off the vacuumatic style pump from the Wingsung 601 what it has to do with the Wingsung 630 I don't know and here is the pen Well, that's substantial. Very, very interesting. There's no snowflake, but other than that, and the cap band model on the back, it says made in Shanghai on the back. So it says Jun Lai, uh, which I assume is some translation of Wing Sun, and 630. Other than that, let's compare it. This Mont Blanc 149 is in rose gold, so you can see this one's gold. Well, gold plate, and this one's rose gold. They look virtually identical. I would think there's some millimeters difference. The Wing Sung 630 is just a couple of millimeters longer by my eye. And we have a clear ink window and what looks like a number eight size Wing Sung 14 karat gold nib can't remember what i ordered but i thought i ordered a medium that's a black plastic feed and here's the piston going through that ink window and the guts are brass so i'll have to see if my wing sung tool works on that certainly this kit has nothing to do with this pen other than using the shim but i wouldn't use that shim on a gold nib and yep it feels just like the mont blanc let's see how they look posted together because this is what inquiring minds wanted to know can you get something that is almost identical to a Mont Blanc but they are pretty much identical those sections are almost identical and there is this June L June Lai wondering why the Wingsung is changing their name like Moon Man did it might differentiate them from the different Wingsung because there's two Wingsungs they're both owned by Hero and one wing song is the 3000 series of the student models the the cheaper pens the less expensive pens i should say whereas the wing song 600 series pens have, are the high-end scale kind of pens so maybe they're going to call the high-end pens june lai and the lower ones stay wing song we'll have to see lots of chinese and it's a piston filler parts diagram and it shows you all the pieces of the piston and how to fill the pen and how to grease that piston and how to clean it and we'll find an ink for this maybe i should put a mont blanc ink in this that would be interesting 
but we will do a review of this pen and we will compare it with the Mont Blanc 149 and the Jinhao X159 and we will see what we shall see because inquiring minds want to know. I'll talk about the parts and features of this pen, do some size comparisons and measurements and provide a writing sample but the first thing inquiring minds want to know about this Wingsong 630 is is it as good as a Mont Blanc 149 at 83 percent less money and what are the differences between these almost identical pens so let's compare and contrast these two fountain pens first thanks go out to my nib guru Jack Hernandez for the loan of this beautiful late model rose gold appointed Mont Blanc 149 for the comparisons. The first and most obvious difference between these two pens is the trademark snow cap on the top of the cap of the Mont Blanc. There's nothing on the top finial of the Wingsong. Second, the cap bands are different, not just because this one says Mont Blanc and the Wingsong says, well, uh, it doesn't even say Wingsong, it says Jun Lai 630. And just a little aside here in explanation if I can. Wingsong is a trademark owned by the Hero Pen Group and the Chinese company Green Stationery purchased the permission to use the trademark and makes the 600 series of fountain pens like the 601, the 628, the 699, the 629, etc., etc. Another company uses the same Wingsong name and makes the 3000 series pens like the 3008. Clear? Good. Just like we're getting used to Moon Man being called Majon now, we'll have to get used to Green Wingsung being called Jun L. Not Jun Lai, like here on the cap band, but Jun L, as we'll see on the nib. I think Jun Lai is a non trademarkable, if that's a word, name in China. So Green Wingsung starting in mid-2022, is using Jun L on their nibs. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. Yeah, I'm confused too. Anywho, regardless of the engraving on the cap band, which is deeply imprinted and cross-hatched in the style and the font of the Mont Blanc, the cap bands themselves aren't actually separate bands, as on the 149. These are slots. So the Wingsong is a single cap band with slots. And it says Made in Shanghai on the back and Jun Lai 630 on the front. Eagle Eyes will note that there are no serial numbers or Made in Germany engravings on either the clip band or the underside of the clip. And the clips are slightly different shapes. I'm surprised that Wingsong didn't use the clip from the 629. You can see the 629 is actually closer to the Mont Blanc in shape than the 630 is. But perhaps they didn't want to get sued. Well, yeah, I don't think so. The cap takes one and one quarter turns to unscrew and reveals a large clear ink window, which is different than the slotted ink window of the 149. And the sections are identical. And the Wingsung has a large 14 karat gold medium nib and the Mont Blanc is 18 karat gold. Let's look at these two nibs close up and see if we can spot the differences and the similarities. This is like one of those children's activity books where they show the same drawing side by side and you have to spot the differences. The Jun L, Jun Lai, Wing Sung Green nib is on the left and the Mont Blanc is on the right. Wing Sung have copied the scroll work of the Mont Blanc precisely but have replaced the 4810 height of the Mont Blanc mountain with the year of their incorporation 2013. It could be the height of Mount Shanghai but I kind of doubt it. Then there's a logo which I assume is the Jun L logo and then it says Jun L AU for gold 585 for the gold content of 14 karat gold and 14k. Again there's no question of what they are copying here. To be clear this is not a fake this is Wingsung Jun Lai Jun L, and it is branded as such. But it is a clone, and I haven't seen a clone this close since the Moon Man M800 clone of the Leonardo Momento Zero. The Wingsung nib unit unscrews from the section in a very interesting way. I don't have the exact tool for it, but there are a couple of slots there at the top that will fit a tool. But the top part of the section right there, that little ring, is part of the nib unit and comes out with it. So it's fairly easy to grip 
the top of that nib and unscrew it. I'll show you in a disassembly video in a moment. The Mont Blanc disassembles in a similar way with some slots and a special tool, but I'm not going to do that because this is Jack's pen, not mine. And of course, both pens have black plastic feeds. And while we're talking about plastic, let's talk about what the caps and bodies are made of. Mont Blanc is famous for its precious resin, a euphemism for injection molded plastic. The Wingsung is also made of injection molded plastic. And what's the difference? Well, that's like asking Colonel Sanders for his secret 11 herbs and spices recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Is Mr. Sanders in? What wrong with you? I say you, he did. The Colonel! By the way, here's the Colonel's secret recipe. Don't tell anyone I told you. I could let you know how I got it, but I'd have to shoot you. To get back to plastics, I'm no chemist, but there are a million ways to make plastic and a million different kinds of plastics. The first plastics were ebonite and bakelite. Modern plastics are polymers. The majority of modern plastics are concentrated in seven major polymer types identified by their numbered resin identification code or RIC. And here are the seven codes. You'll know number six, polystyrene, if you've ever had an audio CD case. You know, the kind that looks like an oil slick and shatters when you breathe on it. Kind of like Twisby. Did you hear what he said? Most injection molded fountain pens, even the precious resin type, are made of ABS plastic, which is a group number seven, other. There's a whole science and technology devoted to the ingredients, composition, melting temperatures, injection molding temperatures, heating and cooling times, and material hardness and flexibility of these plastics. So it really is the 11 secret herbs and spices recipe. Each company will have its own guarded family secret recipe for its own special blend of precious resin. That's a very long explanation for this simple rule. All precious resins are plastic, but not all plastics are precious. There's no way to tell the quality of one ABS injection molded plastic from the other, other than by how durable they are, how finely finished and polished they are, and their longevity. Of course, the Mont Blanc has a huge track record here, and the Wingsung, not so much. But the Wingsung is nicely finished. There are no injection molding gates or seams apparent on the pen anywhere. And if you close your eyes, you just can't feel the difference. Whoops. Sorry. Open the door for Mr. Buckle, the blind man! Wait! You got that door closed again, huh? Don't, don't do Wait, that! Look out. It's all right. Think nothing of it. Just a little glassware. I should have my eyes open. But when you close your eyes, you can't really feel the difference between these two pens, either by weight, feel, thickness, texture, or the feel of the precious resin. Physically, the two pens are essentially identical, only off by fractions of millimeters, except for the overall length, where the 630 is two millimeters longer overall, two millimeters longer unposted, and three millimeters longer posted. I bought this pen from Mary's Stationery Store on AliExpress for $145 US. Now let's look at that video I shot disassembling this pen, followed by some size comparisons. So let's see about taking this Wingsung 630 apart. We can take off the cap. As to the nib, there are two slots in the nib unit right there and there that you can get a tool into. I don't know that there's a tool for this yet, but the Hongdian tool for nib removal almost fits in there and you can give it a little bit of a tug on one or both of those little notches with the Hongdian tool. But because this unit comes apart with the top collar attached to the unit, all you really have to do is get some gripping material and grab a hold of the top of that unit and give it a twist. And it comes off. And there's the nib unit right there. And there's a little bit of ink on it right now because I did a dip test of this nib before filling it. There's a silicone o-ring at the bottom of that thread. And I suppose that's friction fit in there with the plastic feed, but I have no need to take that nib out of there, so I'm not gonna do it. This isn't a $5 Jinhao. And here at the top of the section, without the nib, you can see there's a gate there and a gate there uh, from injection molding, so that proves that it's injection molded. 
and you can get at that ink chamber to clean this pen out without disassembling the entire pen. You could take a Q-tip and add some silicone grease that way without removing the piston. But let's remove the piston, shall we? We open it up and we see that it has flatted sides on it like this. This piston mechanism is different than the Mont Blanc 149. This is more of a Pelican style piston mechanism. And the Wingsung 699 wrench for the 699 piston filler fits that perfectly. Slip it on there, close the blind cap down, and give it a twist. Righty loosey, lefty tighty. It's the reverse thread. And we can pull that unit out. There's the piston. It is indeed a Pelican style piston mechanism. In fact, this wrench works on the Pelican M800 as well. And you got to watch out for that little ring right there. That comes right off. You don't want to lose that. And there's no need for taking this any further apart than this. You can t roll that piston rod right out of there. But then it becomes a sort of a trial and error process of putting the whole thing back together again so that the piston closes down. So I recommend keeping that wrench on there while you're maintaining your piston, cleaning it off, um, adding some silicone grease, adding some silicone grease to the barrel, rinsing out your barrel, whatever you want to do to clean and maintain your pen. Of course, the reverse, put the piston back in, making sure that ring is in place, and then you're going to lefty tighty to get that back together and just give it hand tight release the blind cap the wrench drops off and you can close that barrel down put your nib unit back in the pen and because that collar is part of it, it becomes very very simple to replace this a little gripping material give it a turn until that unit is tight and there we go put the cap back on and we're good to go and here is the Wingsung 630 piston filler with the model that posed for it for copying. The Mont Blanc 149. This one has rose gold trim. A Jinhao X159 converter with a number 8 size steel nib. A Wingsung 629 piston filler. And a Platinum President cartridge converter. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the Wingsong 630 is just a few millimeters longer than the Mont Blanc 149 when it's posted, whereas the Jinhao X159 is almost precisely the same size. The 630 has a 14 karat gold nib, the 149 18 karat gold nib. This is a steel number 8 size Jinhao nib. The Wingsong 629 has a number 6 size 14 karat gold nib, and the Platinum President has a slightly smaller than six size 18 karat gold nib. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. The 630 has a clear open ink window. The 149 has a slotted ink window. The Jinhao X159 is a cartridge converter pen. The Wingsung 629 has a slotted window similar to the 149. And the Platinum President is a cartridge converter pen. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Wingsung 630 piston filler, and it has a 14 karat gold medium nib. Let's check the wetness. It's plenty wet, and this pan is plenty smooth as well but you might be able to hear this there's a good deal of feedback it's not scratchy mind you it is feedback and the line the nib makes is thinner than I expected for a medium even for an Eastern medium and the ink today is Mont Blanc mystery blue <laughs> mystery black 
must be colorblind today. But there is no mystery why I chose this ink. As to line variation, well, this is where this nib really shines. Look at this. Lots of nice variation. It shouldn't be considered a flex nib, but it's nicely soft and bouncy. Let's get a close up on that. And you can see what a nice bounce there is in that nib, making a nice, soft writing experience. And you can push it to get some line variation. The nib makes a 0 0.4 millimeter line, which is a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine to medium on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below. So even by Eastern standards this isn't a medium nib but with the variation it thickens out to a maximum push that I'm willing to push it but it's nicely springy is 0 0.9 millimeters which makes it close to a Western double broad. There might be a little bit more feedback than I'm comfortable with in this nib, but a little 12,000 grit micro mesh will polish that out and make it a tad smoother for my taste. Again, it's not scratchiness, it's feedback. Think of it like it's drag or friction on the page. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, not scratchy, lots of feedback, much drier and even thinner, triple extra fine. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, putting aside the question of the outright ripoff of the Mont Blanc 149 design by Wingsung, just judging the pen on its own merits, it's extremely well built. The piston housing isn't plastic, it's brass. And the cap and body are polished black resin that is really well finished and substantial. The nib is large, just fractions of millimeters off the size of the Mont Blanc 149 nib and it writes beautifully with a nice bounce. But is it worth $145? Well, when it was $200, I refused to buy it. At $145, I thought I wouldn't buy it for myself, but I needed to see it for my channel. Should you buy one? Well, that price gap between a new Mont Blanc 149 and this Wingsung is ridiculous at between $830 and $885 more for the Mont Blanc. I don't care how precious your resin is, as a physical product, these two pens should not have that kind of price gap. I think a new Mont Blanc 149 has a hugely inflated price due to its luxury brand prestige and reputation. I'm going to peg that mark up at around 30%. And that's because I think the Mont Blanc 149 should be priced in line with the Pelican M1000 Souverain at around $700 US. They seem like comparable pens in terms of prestige and quality. A new M1000 is still out of my reach, but it's something you might save for or trade a bunch of pens for. Should you buy a Wingsung 630? If you're curious as to whether you'd even like writing with one, just get a Jinhao X159 instead for five bucks. They are less than the price of a coffee, are well made, write very, very nicely, even with a steel nib. And if you really need a gold nib, then the Wingsong 630 might be your first gold nib fountain pen. At $145 US, it is less than a Pilot E95S or a Platinum 3776, the usual suggestions for entry-level gold nib fountain pens. But is it a Mont Blanc replacement? Well, I don't think Mont Blanc is going to be sweating about this pen. They might decide to sue, as it is a blatant ripoff of their design, but good luck to them. But the Wingsung 630 has no history. We don't know if it'll fall apart in a month. There's no warranty, service, or support from a company that has more brand names than the Kardashian family. If you really want a Mont Blanc 149, 
because let's face it, no one needs a Mont Blanc 149, then I would suggest you find a late model used 149 that is in a reasonable price range, say 350 to 450 dollars US. It's just a black pen after all. And I'd like a little bit of visual pizzazz for that kind of money. So that's why I suspect I'll own a Pelican Souverain M1000 Sreisman before I ever own a Mont Blanc 149. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Jack Hernandez for the loan of this beautiful rose gold Mont Blanc 149. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. watching and that's all she wrote I made this